Lesson 5.4, Long Division of Decimals by Whole Numbers. We can use long division to divide decimals by whole numbers. We can estimate the quotient first, then we divide as we would with whole numbers. We can use our estimate to place the decimal point in the quotient. The decimal point will go directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Here we have 6 and 84 hundredths divided by 2. This is the dividend, this is the divisor, and our answer is the quotient. In long division, the divisor is placed at the outside left of the problem. We can estimate this as 6 whole divided by 2 is 3, so the decimal point will go to the right of 3 in the quotient. And the decimal point for the quotient goes directly above the decimal point for the dividend. We divide decimals as we would divide whole numbers. We learned whole number division in fourth grade math 4.9, 4.10, and 4.11. And these videos are linked in this video's description if you need to refresh your memory. We have 7 and 85 hundredths divided by 5. This dividend is greater than the divisor. 7 whole is greater than 5. We can estimate 7 divided by 5. The 5 fits into 7 one time because 5 times 1 is 5. We put a 1 here. 5 fits into this 7 one time. And the quotient's decimal point will be placed to the right of the 1. And notice that it's directly above the decimal point in the dividend. The 5 fits into 7 one time. We put a 1 here. And 5 times 1 is equal to 5. We multiply. 5 times 1 is 5, we subtract, we get a 2, and we drop the 8 down. Now we think 5 fits into 28 how many times? It can fit into 28 5 times, so we put a 5 up here, and 5 times 5 is 25, now we subtract. We get a 3, and it's the 5's turn to come down. Now we ask ourselves, 5 fits into 35 how many times? It fits in 7 times, and 5 times 7 is 35. We subtract and get a 0. Our answer, our quotient, is 1 and 57 hundredths. Let's try another one where the dividend is greater than the divisor. We have 8 and 34 hundredths divided by 3. The 8 is greater than the 3, so we think 8 divided by 3. And the 3 fits into the 8 2 times because 3 times 2 is 6. We put a 2 here above the 8. And the decimal point will be to the right of the 2 above the decimal point of the dividend. 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract and get a 2. It's the 3's turn to come down. We think 3 fits into 23. How many times? Well, 3 times 7 is 21. We subtract the 21, we get a 2, it's the 4's turn to come down. We think 3 fits into 24 8 times, because 3 times 8 is 24, we subtract and get a 0, and our quotient is 2 and 78 hundredths. Here's another one where the dividend is greater than the divisor. We have 53 and 13 hundredths divided by 23. We can estimate 53 divided by 23. The 23 fits into 53 2 times, because 23 times 2 is equal to 46. So we think about 2 can fit into that. We can think 25 can fit into 50 2 times. We put our 2 above the 3, because we're fitting it into the 53. The quotient's decimal point will be to the right of the 2. And notice it's directly above the decimal point in the dividend. 23 times 2 is 46. We subtract and get a 7. It's the 1's turn to come down. We ask ourselves, how many times can 23 fit into 71? 3 times, because 23 times 3 is 69. We subtract and get a 2. It's the 3's turn to come down. And 23 fits into 23 one time. We put a 1 up here. 23 times 1 is 23. We subtract and get a 0. Now, if you're very confused about doing long division, 
you can either check the videos for fourth grade math that are in the description or you can see the fifth grade math 2.2 and 2.3. We learned about one digit and two digit long division. We can model decimal division and divide using place value. We learned that in video 5.2. We have 1 and 28 hundredths divided by 2. We model one whole with a square, two lines as two tenths, and eight little circles as eight hundredths. We regroup the one whole as ten tenths. And we put them into the two groups, taking turns, so they go into them as equal groups. We erased them or crossed them out as we put them into the groups so we know we used them already. We have five in each group. We can put each of these in a group, those tenths. Then we can evenly divide the eight hundredths between the two groups. We have six tenths and four hundredths in each group. It's sixty-four hundredths. Doing it using long division, we think two cannot fit into one. So we fit it into the one and two tenths regrouped as twelve tenths. And two can fit into twelve six times. Our decimal point is going directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Because our quotient is a decimal number and we have nothing in the ones place, we need to put a zero there. 2 times 6 is 12. We write it here and subtract. We get 0, and it's the 8's turn to drop down. 2 fits into 8 four times. And 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract it and get a 0 for our remainder. We have 64 hundredths, just like we got when we did the models. And remember to place a 0 to the left of the decimal point in the quotient in the 1's place. So remember, this is the dividend, this is the divisor, and this is the quotient. We can check our answer using the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication. We multiply the quotient by the divisor. If the product is equal to the dividend, our math is correct. If, our, if when we multiply the quotient and the divisor, if it equals this dividend, we know we did our math correctly. We have 64 hundredths times 2. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 6 is 12. We regroup the 1 and put the 2 down. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. We have 1, 2 decimal hops in the factors. There's none here because it's a whole number. So we have a total of 2. So there's going to be a total of 2 decimal hops in the product. We have 1 and 28 hundredths, just like the dividend. So remember, the total amount of decimal place value hops in all the factors will be the amount of decimal place value hops in the product. And we learned that in video 4.7 when we learned about multiplying decimals, which is also linked in the description if you missed it. Remember, the decimal point in the quotient will be directly above the decimal point in the dividend. It doesn't matter how small or large our quotient is, or our problem, the decimal point will go directly above the decimal point in the dividend. When the dividend is less than the divisor, the whole number of the divisor, we regroup the dividend to the tenths or hundredths place. We learned that in the last video, 5.3, which is linked in the description. We have 2 and 82 hundredths divided by 6. And this two whole number is less than the 6 divisor. And we think we can regroup this as 282 hundredths divided by 6. We can estimate 240 hundredths divided by 6. We think of a basic fact that is less than but close to the dividend. And 6 is compatible with 24, so it's compatible with 240. Because we think 6 times 4 is equal to 24, so 6 times 40 is equal to 240. That means 2 and 40 hundredths divided by 6 is equal to 40 hundredths. We have 6. It can't fit into the 2, so we have a 0 
above the 2, because it's a decimal number, we put a 0 in the 1's place. 6 can fit into 28 4 times, and 6 times 4 is 24. We subtract and get a 4, and it's the 2's turn to come down. 6 fits into 42 7 times, because 6 times 7 is 42. We get a 0 remainder. We have 47 hundredths. Now, if we had estimated to this 282 to be 300, it would have been too high. We would have had 300 hundredths divided by 6. And 6 times 5 is 30, so it would be a 5 in our quotient. But if we do 6 times 5 is 30, we can't subtract that from the 28. If we use a basic fact that is greater than the dividend, our estimate will be too high, like here. And we'll need to adjust it down to fit so that we can subtract. So it's better to think of a basic fact that is less than but close to the dividend. Sarah earns $23.58 working three hours. How much does she earn per hour? So we think we can divide $23.58 by three to know one hour. We can estimate the $23.58 as 21 hundredths divided by 3, because that's compatible because 3 times 7 is 21. That would be 700 hundredths. So we know there's going to be a 7 here. We can also look at it as 3 can't fit into 2, so we fit it into the 23, and 3 times 7 is 21. We multiply and subtract and drop the 2 down. Now it's the 5's turn to come down, and we think 3 fits into 25 8 times, and 3 times 8 is 24. We subtract and get a 1. It's the 8's turn to come down. 3 fits into 18 6 times, and 3 times 6 is 18. We subtract and get a 0. So we're, mo we're doing long division just as we would with whole numbers. The difference is we've got a decimal point directly above the dividend's decimal point in the quotient. Remember, because we're dividing money, we need to put a dollar sign up here in the quotient. Emma spent $49.56 for three shirts. Tala spent $68.84 for four shirts. How much more did Tala pay per shirt than Emma? So we think. We need to divide $49.56 by 3 and $68.84 by 4 to find each price per shirt. Then we need to find the price difference per shirt. So for Emma, we have 3 trying to fit into $49.56. 3 fits into 4 one time. We put a 1 up here. And 3 times 1 is 3. We subtract and get a 1. It's the 9's turn to come down. 3 fits into 19 6 times because 3 times 6 is 18. We subtract and get a 1. It's the 5's turn to come down. 3 fits into 15 5 times. 3 times 5 is 15. We subtract and get a 0. It's the 6's turn to come down. 3 fits into 6 2 times. And 3 times 2 is 6. We subtract and get 0. So we know Emma paid $16.52 for each shirt. For Tala, 4 fits into 6 one time. We put a 1 above the 6. 4 times 1 is 4. We subtract and get a 2. It's the 8's turn to come down. 4 fits into 28 seven times because 4 times 7 is 28. We subtract to get a 0. It's the 8's turn to come down. 4 fits into 8 two times. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract that and get a 0. And it's the 4's turn to come down. 4 fits into 4 one time. And 4 times 1 is 4. We subtract and get a 0. We now know that Tala paid $17.21 per shirt. We subtract to find the difference. $17.21 minus $16.52 that Emma paid per shirt. We see the difference is $0.69. Cents. That means Tala paid 69 cents per shirt more than Emma. Maybe it was a little bit fancier. And as I always say, 
we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep place values in their correct column. You can also check this description to use PayPal or Patreon to help me support my three dogs and all my efforts to help you. In our next lesson, 5.5, we're going to model dividing decimals by decimals. Remember, the decimal point in the quotient is going to go directly above the decimal point in the dividend. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.